Hi, I am Sam. I am your substitute viewer of the month for the last Saturday in June. Unfortunately, the regularly scheduled viewer of the month could not make a video today, so Jesse hit me up and asked if I wanted to do it. And I like to weasel my way onto this channel, so I'm here. So I was immediately nervous when Jesse told me what the subject was because for as much as I like to think I'm doing well and I'm pretty much together at this point, uh, that was not always the case. I was actually a hot mess for <laughs> quite some time. Uh, basically, my story is that my parents got divorced when I was about six years old, and I am essentially my father's clone, which became a big problem because my mother had custody, and my father was very much demonized, which was completely unfair. So I was on the receiving end of a lot of negativity and punishment that I did not earn and did not understand because I was a child. I was essentially bullied and neglected by, like, the entire family other than my father. And that does things to you when, you know, you're seven and you don't know why everybody hates you and why everybody's saying things about you and your dad, who is your best friend. My mother had some emotional issues that I, I don't want to go into because that is very personal, but she really was not fit to have custody of me. There was a lot of emotional abuse and mental abuse and neglect that went on. I never felt safe. I never felt loved. And I had so much hatred in me towards them and towards myself. And then she passed away right before my 13th birthday, which was when I had secretly been planning on trying to get custody changed to my father, which also is not fun to deal with <laughs> when you were a kid. So there was a lot of guilt there and a lot more self-hatred and confusion. And then as I got older, I started doing that thing that a lot of people unfortunately do where they start to recreate sort of that broken relationship with their parent in romantic relationships. So even though I was out of that destructive environment, I continued it myself. I was looking for someone to essentially love me and take care of me and make me feel like I mattered. And that is not something that you can get from other people. It's just not. I mean, you have your friends and people that you love that are your support system. But if you legitimately don't love yourself, you, you just can't get that from another person. You'll only drive them away. Especially when you are seeking that love from somebody who cannot love you like I was. <laughs> I really should have gotten help early on. I should have gotten professional help. But I did not get professional help because there's that whole stigma and I didn't want to feel weak. I didn't want to lay everything out and have to look at it. I was scared of that. And that is absolute crap because getting help is the strongest thing that you could ever do. And the thing with depression is there is such a chemical element to it. It's not just situational. If you're in there for long enough, your brain chemistry can change or sometimes you're just born with this imbalance and there is nothing wrong with seeking help or taking medication. But I hate when people talk about not wanting happiness from a pill or not wanting to turn themselves into a robot because that's not how it works, that's not what it does. And if I had been strong enough to seek help, I would have avoided a lot of terrible things that happened to me. Even though I did not seek professional help, like I encourage you to do if you are in such a situation, Things that did help me a lot were art, of music. I actually have a very creepy amount of like Amy Lee and Evanescence all over my wall that was assembled when I was about 14 years old uh, because that was really my therapy for dealing with my mother's death was the album Fallen. I just clicked with it and it kept me sane. And music is still what keeps me sane. I've started learning to play guitar myself. I've started learning to write songs. And they're all terrible, but it doesn't matter because the point is that it gives me some work to funnel things that I can't handle. And this will probably sound silly, but that's one of the reasons that I got into YouTube was this feeling of isolation that I had and being surrounded by negativity. Through YouTube, I found a lot of positive people that just through living their lives and sharing their lives, it started with CTFXC, I was like, look at this joy that they're creating all on their own, and it made me want to do that. And it really encouraged me to just get up 
and make a change. So you really need to surround yourself with people who are the kind of people that you want to be. Even if you can't find them yourself, you can find them on the internet. That's what's so brilliant about this, though you really should be seeking them in your own life because you don't want to forget real life. But you need people around you who will help you help yourself. And if you aren't somebody who's dealing with depression yourself, but you know somebody who is, it's incredibly frustrating because you can't help them for them. You can be there for them, but there's only so much that you can do as a friend and you need to know that or else you're going to overextend yourself and you will both get dragged down into this hole. Recommend that they get help, let them know that it's okay, help them help themselves. But don't get caught in that cycle of let me try to fix you because you can't and it's not your place. And I am somebody who was in a very dark place for the majority of my life and I feel like I am a very happy person now. I mean, I'm kind of annoying at this point with my optimism. So just know that it is not hopeless. It never is hopeless as long as you are willing to fight for yourself. And you deserve that. You deserve to be fought for by you. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if you think that nobody loves you. I'm telling you that I love you. I don't even know you. But I don't care because every human being deserves joy and love and happiness. And I wish you all of that and more. And that got really serious and awkward. Mm -hmm.